Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To make a query in Design View, click the Query Design button that appears in the Queries group, or the Other group as it's called in Access 2007, on the Create tab in the ribbon to create a new query in the Query Design View. The first thing you will see is the Show Table dialog box appearing over the Query Design View. Just as with the Relationships window which you used earlier, here you will have to add the table or the tables that you need for the query into the Query Design View. You simply select the names of the tables that you wish to add, and then click the Add button in the Show Table dialog box to add the necessary tables into the query. Now the Query Design View gives you power and flexibility when you're designing queries. Although it isn't the only way to make them initially, you will have to learn how to use the Query Design View at some point as you grow in your access skill set. In Query Design View, the tables from which you extract data are placed into the top section of the Design Grid. You can then add the fields from these tables that you want to view within your query results into the bottom section, which is called the QBE, or Query by Example Grid. Now if you want to add all of the fields from a query table into your query result set, you can click and drag the first field in the table, which displays an asterisk, down into the QBE grid. That will then show all of the fields in that table in the result set of the query. Once the fields are in place, you can then add any criteria and set any sorting options that you would prefer in the QBE grid to then filter and sort the data that you wish to see. Now ensure that you've only added the tables that you absolutely need in order to run the query. Adding additional tables which you will not use forces the query to access those tables whenever it's run, slowing it down pointlessly. It can also produce unexpected and sometimes erroneous results. As you add the necessary tables to the query, the joins which you created between the tables in the Relationships window will also be displayed at the top of the query. So make sure that you've added all of the necessary tables for your query. So for example, assume that you have two tables from which you wish to extract data, the Customers table and the Employees table. However, also assume that those two tables do not share a direct join between them. In order for the query results to make any sense whatsoever, you would also have to add the table that is used to associate those two tables as well. So assume that the Employees table is related to the Customers table through the Orders table. In this case, you would also have to add the Orders table to the query, even though you had no intention of displaying any particular data from that table. It's needed in order to relate the two tables from which you do want to extract the data. Note that if you add two tables that are not joined to each other in any way, the query result will often produce a Cartesian product, where every value in every row of one table is multiplied by the value in every row of the second table. You'll usually notice when this happens, as you'll probably have several hundred if not thousand more records in your query result set than you do data records in either table. Now once you've added the necessary tables to the query, just click the Close button in the Show Table dialog box to close it and display the Query Design view beneath it. You should see the tables that you've added shown as small table diagrams at the top of the Query Design view. Note that if you forgot a table and need to add it to the query, you can click the Show Table button that appears in the Query Setup group on the Design tab of the Query Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon to open the Show Table dialog box again. Also note, if you accidentally added a table which you do not need, you may right-click on the table diagram of the table that you do not want in the Query Design view, and then select the Remove Table choice from the pop-up menu that appears to remove that table from the query. Next, you will need to add the fields that you want to show in the Query result set from the tables into the grid at the bottom of the Query Design view. One way to do this is to click and drag the name of the field that you want to display from the tables and drop it into the columns at the bottom of the design grid.
You can also double click on the name of a field shown in the tables to add it to the design grid as well. There are actually quite a few ways that you can add fields from the tables into the design grid area below. Also note the order in which the fields are listed in the grid is the order in which those fields will be displayed in the query result set. Now before you can remove a field which you accidentally added to the grid, or reorganize the order of the fields in the grid, you must first select the column to delete or move in the result set. Now to do this, place your mouse pointer slightly above the column in the grid area that you want to select until you see a downward pointing black arrow appear. Then click once to select that field. To delete it at that point, you may simply press delete on your keyboard. If you wanted to move it, simply place your white mouse pointer arrow into the very top of the selected column and then click and drag the selected column left or right. As you drag it, you'll see a thick black line appear between the columns over which you drag your mouse. The line represents where the column will be inserted when you release your mouse button. Now most often, after you've added the fields that you want to view into the query grid, you then add sorting and filtering criteria to the query. However, if you do not wish to restrict the data that's displayed, then you can simply run the query at this point. Now to run a query, and view the result set, you can click the Run button that appears in the Results group on the Design tab of the Query Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon to view the query's result set. The result set looks like a table when viewed in Datasheet View. However, a query result set is not by default a base table in the same way that your other database tables are. The table that is produced when you run a query disappears as soon as you close the query. A query is really a definition of what data should be retrieved and displayed from the tables. Therefore, a query always shows the most up-to-date data every time that you run it. You can switch the query back to the query design view after you have run the query by clicking the view button in the view group on the home tab in the ribbon. If you click the view drop down arrow, then just select the design view choice from the drop down menu you'll switch back to the query design view. Now either way, once you're ready to save your query, click the Save button that appears in the Quick Access Toolbar. You can then type a name for your query into the dialog box that appears. Then just click OK to save the query. You can then close the query without losing all of your query design work. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.